All right. Well, shoot. That was, I was not ready for that. Okay. It's day five. Um, so it turns out here's my number five mug. All right. Nobody's here. Oh, somebody's here. Here's my number five mug. Uh, turns out I do have a number four mug too. My number five mug broke. This is, uh, if you see weird stuff, so you can see I've got, uh, well, I've got my note says cough into your arm. This is also my drinking horn or some uh, duck calls there. Maybe we'll use those a little bit later. So, and I got an easel. I'm all excited about that. And some whiteboard markers and some other things. Um, updates on what's happening. Uh, I just got emails from the college board. I think I just sent them to you as well. The about uh, the exam is still going forward. Uh, times are to be uh, a, uh, to be adjusted a little bit later. Um, the content's going to be whatever we got through, whatever the college board thinks that most of us got through uh, at um, beginning of March. Uh, we shall see. I think we're doing okay here. And then um, what else? Oh, no multiple choice, I think. And it's just going to be a 45-minute free response. So uh, as that content's coming along, we will figure it out as we go. Uh, remember, this is today's truth. This is where we are. This is a very fluid situation. We will see where we are on Monday. So if you go to the College Board website, you'll see there's some uh, res there's no resources yet for AP Physics. Um, that's kind of coming down the pike. So I think we will kind of finish up some questions that we had from before, uh, and then kind of take what else you got going around. I really don't know where it is. If they um, Kind of sad because the lenses and physical optics and nuclear and atomic physics are some of my favorite this stuff. Please watch those lectures; they'll make me feel better deep inside. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think what else is exciting and new that you need to know about uh, content-wise and school-wise. So, uh, yeah. I think that's pretty much it. I'm going to try to get some other things on there. Was there anything else? Um, yeah, I think that's it. I did for the uh, so the ray tracing uh, address uh, or the ray tracing uh, stuff. I did post a principal rays for lenses. If you want a little better one, this is from uh, Dean Beard. This is on um, the locker in School Loop. So. Uh, you can check that out there. I'm going to walk through that a little bit. And then I've got two questions, uh, both from Brandon, one about uh, multiple lenses, and then also a question about contacts. Um, so, here we, uh, yeah, so just remember, we are in a fluid situation. Uh, we're all in this together uh, apart. So even though, um, don't yeah, stay six feet away from people, wash your hands, don't touch your face. Um, I can see it. Uh, what else? That should be about it. Let's draw some. Uh... Here we go. The lenses. So I've got a convex lens. So I've got three lenses here. Uh, we're just going to go through our principal lenses and our principal rays and walk ourselves through that. Next. So first, um, we have, so I am using, again, uh, Dean Baird stuff. Uh, yeah, terminology. Uh, he's a great physics teacher down in Southern California. So, all right, here we go. Uh, because I forgot to grab my straight edges, when you're in a big hurry leaving or trying to figure out everything you need out of your school, grabbing a meter stick is not one of them. So I do have a yardstick. Um, this yardstick has got to be older than me. And um, I'm old. 
So, and because it's so old, it's also in inches. And I don't, uh, I know right now uh, there's a whole bunch of people going, ha, ha, ha. Now nah, you've got to use English units. See, inches, people care. Wow. Desperate times cause for, <laughs> desperate times require desperate measures. So we're using the English system. So here's our uh, convex lens. Convex are shaped like this. Concave, again, shaped like that. So you're going in the cave, and then convex is the other one. So with that, uh, let's do some uh, let's ray trace stuff out. So you still have the same thing. You have a focal, you have a focal point, but because you, know, you can't quite see this get closer. Because light can go both ways through. Oh, I've got goofy shadows. There we go. Because you have goofy shadows, uh, because the light can go both ways, you have a focal point and then you have the antifocus. It's just on the other side. I'm going to have to work on my lighting in here. It's pretty dark. The sun went behind a cloud. Uh, so you have the focus and the antifocus. So this becomes the center and the anti-center. And the same thing. So the focus is half the distance to the center of the center is twice the distance of the focus of the focus. And so all of them have one. So here's your the anti ones are on the side. Uh, we'll get to this one in a second. So let's have a uh, image here. There's our image, and let's draw our principal rays. So the first one is the Uzalak. If you remember right, the one parallel ray to the principal axis. Ooh, let's see here. Parallel ray to the principal axis. The sun shifted on me. And now all my stuff doesn't quite work. Ah, eh, whatever. Parallel rays. Parallel ray. Goes through the focus, but I want you to see really closely, right? here that it looks like it misses my lens. So we treat the lens as this dotted line through the center of the lens. The uh, Does that light actually go through the lens, that light, light ray? No, it does not. However, it's one of our principal lens, it's one of our boundary conditions. So if the lens were there, that's where it would go. So that's gonna go through the focus. The next is change my colors here. The next is the gyre. Remember, the gyre goes through on the mirrors. The gyre goes through the focus. For the uh, lenses, uh, it goes through the antifocus. So this one's already used. So now we have to use this one. So the ray that goes through that focus. It's the lens. That one comes out parallel. So you can see we also already know where our um, where our that's really bothering me. There we go. Where our image is going to be. But let's keep going with the other uh, two principal rays. The I'm running out of color. The Crispio. Remember, the Crispio is the one that goes through the center. Oh, if I did this right, oh, close enough. Huh. Oh yeah, that one's the Crispio. It goes through the center. Doesn't get changed. I didn't label the other one. That was the uh, guy here. I'm gonna make sure that one. Was the guy here. And then the Terwilliger. The Terwilliger is a little bit tr 
tricky. It's the tubercular is the one that goes through the center, but you go through the anti-center. So where's my other? I need a different color that you can see. I guess we can use pink here. So this is going to be the terwilliger. Got to extend that down a little bit so I know where the heck I am. Where did my marker go? Yeah. Uh, Urge's question How do you know which one is the anti focus? The anti focus and anti centers are on the same side as the object, and the Focus and center are on the opposite side of the lens, or the opposite side of the object. So you want to be where the on the uh, wherever the changed, oh shoot, the changed reflected refracted light is the the pot is the focus and center side. On the mirrors, the focus and center, we're really looking at the reflected ends, the reflected ends of it. So that's why these are the regular focus and the regular center. But, but the lens, the helo rays that have been changed the direction are on this side, so this becomes the focus in the center. All right, and then let's see. Nope, didn't break anything. All right, that's gonna go there. Nice. So you can see all four of those lines are coming through in the same spot. So now, here's the top of my ray. The light that was here spread all out and then came back together there. That means my image is here. So the top of my arrow is up here. The top of my arrow has to be here. The bottom of my arrow is still on the line. Look at that. Beautiful. That's wonderful. You can couldn't have asked for a better setup on that, my first attempt through. So now that was beyond the focus. Let's get within the focus here. Let's try one there. Uh, so this is real. Uh, Upside down, uh, real, um, I couldn't remember what the other words are. Uh, upside down, uh, inverted, upside down, real, upside down, and smaller. There we go. Do we assume that the lens is, ult is infinitely thin? Yes. So when we are doing this, uh, all, all of our lenses uh, will be thin. So again, this is the thin lens equation. That's the uh, back to, was it one over the, one over the focus is one over distance to the object plus one over distance to the image, or I forgot, one over SI plus one over SO, SO over SI. D or S, it kind of floats around. So we use that same one. Now you can calculate yourself out and figure it out from there. Let's do this one. Shreya's question, why is it a real image on the right side? Real images means the light rays actually cross. The side that it's on doesn't matter. So the light rays must cross here in order for it to re be a real image. That's all that real means. So that is the thing that you're going to be looking for, whether or not those ray, whether those light rays actually cross each other or whether they're dotted lines. So then let's get down to this one. Let's put ourselves into this situation. So I'm going to be oh, about halfway through here. Uh, what was that? Too high? Too, yeah. I think this should work. 
Um, now let's move our image within the focus. And we do the same thing again. So, Uzalak. This would be a whole lot better if I wasn't colorblind. I'm gonna guess it's this one. So, parallel rays. The parallel ray. The Uzlak goes through the focus. All right. What's next? Um, uh, oh, we did the guy or the guy or is gray. That was that was good thinking. Or green? Maybe it's green. Uh, the gyre needs to go through the antifocus, but I'm in front of the antifocus. So that means I need to act like it came from there. So here's the antifocus. I'm going to take this. I don't know if that held it all. Oh my yardstick is too long. There we go. So to act like it comes from the focus, it's gonna come up through here. That's the one that comes out parallel. That is the guy. There we go. All right. And you can see those two lines do not cross. So that means we're going to have to draw them back somewhere else. I want to draw the rest of those first. Uh, you know what? Yeah, let's just keep going. Let's draw that back. That one goes this way. They don't cross anywhere. So I need to walk them back to find out where they do. And this is where your dotted line comes in. Remember, there's no light going this way. Oh, there's a light that's brown. I think it's brown. This color. Close enough. Okay, they're telling me that they're gonna cross right here. Uh, it's dotted lines that are crossed here. So that means it is a virtual image. There's no actual light crossing right here. But let's keep going. Uh, now the Crispio. All right. Now we will see whether my drawing skills have gotten better. I thought I had a red one. Is this red? Okay, the Crispio goes through the center. There's the center, there's the power. Again, it doesn't line up, so we're going to dot and line it back. Ooh, I like that. And then the Terwilliger. Why do I not know what color that is? Here we go. I think it's pink. So the Terwilliger. I, it needs to go through the anti-center, but I'm in front of the anti-center. So that means I need to act like I came from the anti-center. All right. There's that one going that way. That is the Terwilliger. That needs to go through the center. Oh, nice. That doesn't line up. Since I've got it already lined up, I don't want to. 
So there's my three lines. Now my image is that with the lines, the light from the top of my um, image here is being spread out, but it looks like it's all coming back from this point. So so now it's larger. Virtual and right side up. Whatever the fancy word for right side up is. All right. Remember, so when if your line, if your change lines, if your if your reflected or refracted lines don't cross, dotted line them, dotted line the refracted ray back or the reflected ray back to where it looks like it comes from. Question: Why does the crispio go straight through the lens? So just like in the um, the when you bounce off the mirror, when you bounce off a mirror in the off that's off where the principal line is, you're going to reflect off at the same angle by the law of reflection. The law that goes through the center here, the idea is that because it's a thin line, it's not going to get refracted. You're basically hitting the center and it's not changing. That's uh, the idea is that that's like so. If you go back to the, the this is the center of curvature on your on your lens, the crispio hits the lens at a zero degree angle. So when you do Snell's law, you have zero uh, refracted angle. That's the, um, that's the idea there. All right. Any other questions on this before we get to the concave lens? Because it's going to start to uh, get a little bit a little bit crazy over there. Let me back this up a little bit so you can kind of see what's happening down there. Nice. All right, those are your standard lens. Uh, the convex, concave, error. these are the convex lenses. Sometimes they'll call them converging lenses. I don't like to say that. So, let's take a look at this lens. Let's go back into the same spot. I'm gonna put my uh no let's go back and label so now i've got my concave lens it goes in like that so you're going inside the cave uh it has a negative focal length it doesn't have a positive one so you'll notice here my positive focal length is this way so that means my negative focal length is this way so this becomes positive f this becomes my center, this is my anti-focus, and then this is my anti-center. When you line it up this way, these all are all, are, 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 are all the same. The words, you do the same setup. Gosh darn it, I wish I could figure out which color I was using. All right, who's it like? That's brownish. Uh, brown. Whatever this is. All right, here we go. Oh, I needed an object. That would help. Let's put it uh, let's put it uh, where we want to Yeah, let's put it here. This is Uzalak. Uzalak goes parallel into the lens. That's the wrong color. Yeah, it's this, this is the one that I want. Anyway. All right, Uzalek goes parallel into the lens and it has to go through the focus. However, I've passed the focus. So it has to 
act like it came from the focus. So that one acts like it came from the focus. Next, uh, Crispio, Crispio, the Crispio is pretty easy. No, wait, we did the guy. We're usually doing the guy next. The guy is gray, green. Green makes more sense. The guy goes through the antifocus and then comes out parallel. However, the antifocus is on this side of the lens. So I need to go through the antifocus. And what you see is I hit the lens before I get to the antifocus. So here's my guy, which means now it comes out. Parallel. Uh, I, I do not draw the dotted line there because dotted lines mean uh, I, I'm, I only use dotted lines on the refracted ray so I can figure out where they are going. Uh, Shreya's question is, can you explain why the focus and antifocus are switched? Because it's negative. They're not switched. They just have different values. So the focus is positives are this way. Negatives are that way. Uh, negative. Positives. So on our lens and mirrors, positives are on the same side as the um, refracted or reflected ray, and then negatives on the opposite side of the, uh, so negatives would be over here because this is where the refracted rays are. Right. So this side's negative, this side's positive. So on mirrors, it's on the same side as the object, right? The, it's from the perspective of the ray, not the perspective of the object in the, in the lens or the mirror. So here, if this side is positive and I have a negative focal length, that means I have to be over here. And so that means the opposite ones are on that side. That's why it has a negative focal length. These have positive focal lengths. They're on the same, the focus is on the same side as the refracted ray. The negative means the focus is on the opposite side as the refracted ray. So uh, there's those two. Oh, we, uh, and I think we walked. Last time we walked these back. So here we go. Like where that is. There we go. That's close. And then brown. This one gets. All right, you can see I'm going to end up with an image way back here. Did I already answer why is your focal length? Thing? I think I did. Um, they're going to go there. Now I need the, we're going to do the other two because we are gluttons for punishment. The Chris Bio goes through the anti center. Through the anti center, but the anti center is over here. So there we go. Anti center is there. And then when it refracts, goes through the center, but again, the left side, I'm, I'm already past the center. So now I've got to act like I came from the center. And that should walk back very nicely, I hope. That's good. And then we got one more. The uh,
Zoom this up a little bit more. You can kind of see a better idea with it. Yeah, the light is shifted. I'm gonna have to work on my lighting. And then next, the well, the Caspia goes to there. Oh, the Terwilliger. The Terwilliger goes. Did I do that backwards? Oh, I did do it backwards. That's not the Crispio, that's the Terwilliger, the ones that go through the center. Um, that one is the, the one that goes through the center is the Crispio. Yeah, is that what I did? No, that's the center of a lens, not through the anti-center. Yeah, that's the Terwilliger here. And then the ray that goes through the center of the lens doesn't get changed. That one is the crispy elf. There we go. And you can see they all cross right there. So our So here's my image. It is smaller, virtual, and right side up. So that is all of them. The tricky one with the concave lens is that everything that you do is now on the opposite sides of where you would normally make them or more normally have what's going on, uh, normally have the things that, are, that you need on there. So you have to kind of switch your thinking, which kind of brings us to our next question. Um, I hope it still stays there. Multiple lenses. When you have multiple lenses, so you can almost see, now I'm shifting to, that's an orange, it's a terrible orange. Let's try this again. There we go, that's better. What happens when you have multiple lenses? This is problem that's in the shadow. So it's chapter 26. Example 19, page 824 in your book. So, um, I'm slowly working on this. Oh, it kind of almost works. Yeah, da, 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 da. yeah, da, da, da. all right. So, uh, when you have, so here's my concave lens with a focal length of plus 20, and then I have a con, this is convex, this is concave lens, minus 15. I'm throwing this marker out. Oh. Where do you go? How do you do this? So let's put a, uh, let's put our, there's our image. When you have multiple lenses, the image of lens one becomes the object for lens two. Oh, no, I think we're okay. So, uh, no, let's see them up here. So here is your, right? There's your distance to your object. This one's green. Here's my focus. Uh, there's my focus. There's my, that's my anti-focus. Here's my focus. This one has its focus here. Here and anti focus there. So let's draw this out. Let's see what happens. 
because there's something interesting happening inside of here. Let's draw it out. I'm only going to draw two principal rays on this time around, and then we'll uh, finish it up from there. So. Parallel rays go through the focus. Notice I am ignoring that second lens right now. So I'm just pretending that it's not there. Rays that go through the focus. We'll come out parallel. Didn't draw it far enough. There we go. So here's my, it's a real object. All right. My image is real and it's upside down. However, it's on the other side. So this becomes the image for that one. However, uh, it's on the other side. You're like, how does that light go back through I'm standing on that side and look through it. How does it get there? It becomes it, its distance to the object is negative. There's a negative object distance. It's on the other side. Do, 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 do. I lost my pieces. So then what do we do? We treat this one as if the light's coming to go back through. So lights like just to make sure, uh, light that goes through the focus comes out parallel. Light that goes through, light that goes through parallel. Now this one's going that way, comes. Out there. Did I do that right? Yes. Now these. That refracted ray comes back. That refracted ray comes back. I now have a virtual image right there. So when I look through this, I see an image that's smaller right there. Is that right? I'm on this side. Oop, I think I made a mistake. Because the light's coming through no, that's still the same. Yep, yep, parallel rays. No, that's right. That's right. Yep, 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 yep. That should be right. Uh, this is a little bit complex. However, what you need to know is that the image of lens, what lens one becomes the object for lens two. Uh, oh, one of the things we really didn't talk about either was just like in just like in um, <sighs> mirrors, there's your object distance, there's your image distance, your height of the object, height of the image, uh, and then again, all of those are the same and they follow the thin lens equation. All right, my son decided to Go behind some clouds. A little bit more. All right, that's not so bad. All right. Uh, that's all I have for now.
Uh, I'm going to try to look at some other problems. I'm going to begin uh, by next week-ish. The uh, college board should know what, what content they're going to try to cover and when. The uh, try to get some labs and try to get some virtual labs in, and uh, I'm looking at a couple places. Uh, keep your eyes out, and um, yeah, I don't know what else. Uh, other than that, keep keep your spirits up. Go outside, walk around a little bit every so often. Uh, don't stay inside and play video games and watch TV. The sun is really helpful. Walk outside at least a little bit. Get that sunlight in your face, uh, especially if it's been raining for a while. You're not gonna you're gonna feel pretty mopey. So, uh, so Shreya says I think they said unit one through units one through five. Uh, I still have to look for that. I'm trying to figure out where that is. So, um, Brandon's question is, do we continue with the submarine project? You know what? Why the heck not? You got nothing else going on, and now you're gonna have a really cool project. So. Uh, and it's going to help. Um, why not? Because I think when we come back, if we come back, um, right now I'm operating under the assumption that we are. So we will see April 13th what the word is and how things are going there. Because uh, Kansas has already closed schools for the rest of the year. Uh, they're also Kansas, so, uh, you know, whatever. So uh, do, 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 do. what else? So yeah, uh, all that homework I just posted, that's kind of in limbo. We'll see where that goes. Um, yeah, and uh, but yeah, definitely have some pro uh, have something to do. Uh, what am I doing? I'm building a, uh, well, I preemptively ordered some parts to build a uh, arcade project. So that's, I've got that set up. I'm gonna have a stand-up arcade that'll be two people. Um, yeah. So do something that's kind of not school related or school adjacent. I mean, if you're building a submarine project, how is that not going to help with your um, fluids and electricity and magnetism using circuits and fluids and forces and that whole thing? Um, so, yeah, keep that stuff going. Uh, there's no reason not to. All right. Well, keep your uh, keep your spirits up. See uh, if you if you see somebody who needs some help, definitely help them out. Um, delivered toilet paper to uh, an older gentleman uh, that I know, just because he wasn't able to get out there. Uh, left it on his porch and then walked away. So we would definitely stayed six feet away. So um, yeah. Other than that, you can send me some email or you can uh, talk to me through School Loop. I'm around. All right. Uh, I almost want to be all roar, right? It's cougars. It's what we do. I haven't heard that in a little bit. All right. Bye.